Well, um, yeah, my name is Matthew Sharp, just a uh, former jail junkie, just trying to pick up the shattered pieces of his broken life. So I'm living in Geraldton at the moment. Um, March next year, I'll be coming back to Perth. And uh, yeah, moving back to Greenwood. Yeah, no, just living in Geraldton at the moment, which is all right. <laughs> it's pretty lonely. I don't really have many friends there or anything, but no, it's, that's a nice town. So there's a lot of cool things going on there. So yeah, just looking forward to coming back to Perth. When I first went to court, after I got arrested, I went in and like the little seating area where people sit to watch was empty except for my dad. He looked at me with just <laughs> devastated eyes. And the judge said, Mr. Sharp, are you aware that this carries a life? The maximum is uh, life in prison, which I was sort of pretty delusional at the time. So I laughed and I was like, okay. And then, um, yeah, I got reminded. And then as I was on the uh, truck to Akia, I was thinking, oh, shit, like I'm going to jail. Think of the TV shows I've seen when you get like raped, like gang raped by bikies and like, you know, black power gangs. Um, but it's pretty much like a daycare center, really. Like a daycare center full of meth freaks and heroin addicts and child rapists. But no, it was actually not too bad in there. I got a pretty good job. I was making $7 a day. So yeah, it was, uh, you know, I was a high roller in there. Uh, sex offenders and murderers and oh, just general junkies and <laughs> low lifes and scumbags of the earth. Oh, definitely some interesting characters. There was uh, one guy I met who, or well, him and his co-offender, they went and kidnapped this guy and they bludgeoned his head in with rocks, like stomped the life out of him, uh, stabbed him multiple times. He had 127 injuries and they couldn't work out what he had died from. And then at the end, when he was laying half dead in the park, they played scissor, paper, rock to decide who's going to shoot him in the head to like finish the job. Actually, today I went and picked up Matt Moore and we went when we went to the Apple store, which is the worst place I've ever been in my life, even worse than jail. I'd rather go back to jail than ever step one second in that store ever again. Um, I've seen this guy like standing in the middle of the road, just like hailing down cars and running up and down. Who was a guy I was in there with. I can't remember his name, but it didn't look like he was doing too well. So. I wish him all the best and like, may God have mercy on his soul. The thing about jail is everything's done for you. So you become pretty lazy and you get, you're stuck in a routine. You have lockdowns at a certain time, like meal, like lockdown, same time every day. Meals the same time every day. And so you just get used to this routine. So upon release, it's pretty weird, like trying to maintain that and just get back into the flow of things because yeah, you just um, become lazy really. You don't have to do anything for yourself. So like coming out, you know, all of a sudden, like it feels like you're under a lot of pressure. And sometimes I still feel now I'm like, oh, I should just go back to jail because it's a lot easier to deal with like in there rather than being out here, you know, which is pretty like fucked up way to think. And you don't really mature in there. You don't grow at all. So I feel like I've just lost. I haven't aged in that time I was gone, you know. So like I'm 27 now, but I still feel like I am 25. Like, it's just lost time, really. Well, I didn't speak to dad for like, over a year. He just refused to come in to visit me. Um, no, like my family always came to visit. I actually, when you get visited, like, when you have visits, you are, you go, you have to like go to this room, you strip off, take all your clothes off and you hop in this jumpsuit and they zip up the back and they put a cable tie around your neck and the suits like never really fit. So I'd always go out to see my family and I used to always be like riding in the groin so you, know, you could see like my little pin dick like sort of like peeking through the uh, cloth of the material <laughs> uh, for the cloth and um, I had one visit because you're always living with someone. You do have single cells but you spend most of your time like with someone so you don't get to like jerk off that much <laughs> you know so you do get like pretty uh, horny and I had one visit a girl coming to see me and I, I hadn't had like anyone besides family come in for a while and so she came in and she was looking really good and I was like, oh yeah, this is awesome. So I got aroused, of course, like got a boner. And then as we're leaving, like as you leave visits, you have to go to these little rooms where you, they snip off the cable tie, you take off your jumpsuit and you have to like lift up your dick, um, lift up, like show on the back of your feet, like run your hands through your hair. Oh, okay, she gets yeah, like um, squat and cough. So make sure like you didn't get anything brought in. So anyway, this girl came to visit me and 
I went in and I had, I had an erection and I, I couldn't tuck it under my belt because I was in a jumpsuit. So they slipped the cable tie and um, I took off my clothes and I just had this raging erection, like rock hard. <laughs> and the screw, like the guard, just was looking directly at it. And because I was so aroused, like there'd been a lot of pre cum sort of like, <laughs> built up at the tip and a drip just went whoop. And it, it was in slow motion and I watched his eyes traverse from like, the tip of my penis to the floor where the pre cum just landed in a big puddle because it was quite a big like, drip. And then, he just, <laughs> and then he just looked back up and we made eye contact. And I sort of just like got my sock and <laughs> wiped it off and had to uh, continue with the uh, rest of the strip oh, search. So. Yeah. yeah, it does get like, it's pretty embarrassing sometimes. <laughs> oh yeah, dad eventually come in. He was really stressed out about coming in and you know, he came in and now we got along and like, now nah, things are good between us now. He used to just come in, he started coming in weekly and he used to just give me like a, a lot of shit, you know, tease me. How's the sex in this son? And like, yeah, you should get a course in blacksmithing. And <laughs> he used to always come in just hung over, like eyes hanging over his head, like melting down his face, uh, reeking of alcohol. I don't know how we got in sometimes because there's sniffer dogs there all the time, but no, it was good. Like, no, we've got a good relationship. So, so mum and dad got divorced when I was about six, but I just have all these memories when I was really little and mum had... Where do I come from on VHS? And I used to always watch it. Like, I'd, it's just my favorite movie to watch because it was like cartoon, you know, I didn't really own too many like VHS cassettes back then. So I used to watch it all the time. And uh, anyway, I guess it sort of made me like really curious, like sexually, bi curious in a way, I guess. And anyway, my dad used to always lay in bed at night with like a big pack of icy poles and he'd lay there like reading his uh, Western books. And I was just laying in there, like, you know, cuddling him, like, oh, dad, I love you, you know, like, pay me attention. And I was looking at his nipples, and all I could think about was, where do I come from, learning about breastfeeding and things like that. And I was a kid, you know, I didn't really know any better, so I just wrapped my, uh, my uh, <laughs> meat lips around his nip and, like, gave it a good suck just to see what would happen. And he jumped up and, like, threw me out of the bed and, like, proceeded to bludgeon my head in and, like, <laughs> dragged me down the hallway and like threw me into my room and slammed the door and uh yeah it was just never really spoken of again afterwards that I remember um I had my cousins over and I uh, I wanted to make a club and my sister's older than me and so is my cousin Reese. and they were saying to me oh, I was like do you want to join my club I can't even remember like best friends club or whatever lame things you think of when you're a kid and they're like well you need an initiation do you have an initiation and I was like oh what's that because I'm a fucking retarded kid I don't know any better <laughs> They're like, well, you have to like have a test, you know, to prove that you're worthwhile. I was like, okay, what should the test be? And then being honest, like, well, how about drinking out of the toilet? And me, being a fucking idiot, said, well, I guess I should do the initiation first because I created the club. So I was uh, just <laughs> lapping the water out of the toilet in the hallway, on my hands and knees like a thirsty dog. And uh, yeah, Pep Pep walked past and saw me and uh, just was like, oh my god, that's fucking disgusting. And in my room where I just sat in the dark and bored my eyes out for about three hours because I was so humiliated. <laughs> I had this reoccurring gym I used to have it all the time and I'd wake up so aroused dick just like hard as granite you know <laughs> and uh, so in this dream we're driving down like the American coastline I'm not sure where you know in your dreams you just know locations even though they're insane and I was a really hot babe like tall blonde big old titties, you know, tanned. And I was driving around in this car with my dad, which is some kind of convertible, like American muscle car. My dad was just my dad, like my dream is like 60 years old, you know, like, and um, I was just this hot baby sitting next to him and I'll just go down on him, like just suck his dick, like to ecstasy. <laughs> and yeah, I just had, I'd wake up so aroused and I actually used to wake up and masturbate because I woke up that aroused from it, which I think is, Obviously, there's something yeah, not right there. Yeah. yeah, it does raise some questions, but was, I haven't had it for a few years now. But I, it's just about a five year period where I had that dream like constantly, at least once a month, like a period, I guess, you know, <laughs> just that bad time of the month. I, um, I don't have a very big penis. Well, I don't believe my penis is very big. I, I've seen a lot of dicks. I see like lookouts all the time, and that thing's huge on the flop. And I get really jealous because I just thought, uh, when it's erect, it's decent. I never really, I never had any complaints. Like girls saying it's small. But when I got broadband, so I was fourteen, living at the Greenwood House, I just 
started abusing like internet pornography. And so I see all these guys with like meter long dicks. It made me really insecure. Oh my God, like I got a tiny needle dick. Like this is humiliating. I can never have sex with a girl. My taste in porn just got more and more like deranged. So I was just pretty much watching these like Nazi hate porn where like girls get treated like a piece of meat and like spit on and slapped and choked and like brilliantly beaten with like an inch of their lives. And this is going to sound pretty fucked up, but it's going to sound like probably a rape maybe, but all the girls I have sex with like is unwilling participants. Okay. I just need to get that across. But um, I just can't maintain an erection, like, <laughs> unless I treat a girl like a fucking rabid mutt, <laughs> which I know it sounds really awful, but I just, and they do the same to me. So it's like, I need them to like spit on me and like slap me and say, you're a worthless cunt, like you piece of shit, your dad hates you. Like, I can't maintain an erection unless it's just hate involved because I always just feel cold and dead inside afterwards. And I look at the person and think, I can't believe you let me do that to you. Like, what the fuck's wrong with you? And they're probably thinking the same thing towards me. So yeah, internet pornography is definitely <laughs> destroyed, like, destroyed my, sex, my sexual life. Oh, my mum's a, uh, no, she's a good lady. Um, so after she left my dad, she decided she would rather just tongue out puss for the rest of her days. <laughs> well, as long as, like, people have sex for until she becomes, like, senile, I guess. No, so, um, no, I get along. I'm really close with my mum. Like, we get along really well. And right now, because I'm living with her, she's always saying, oh, Matthew, like, don't leave. Like, you can stay here forever. You know, just really babies me. And no, she's like, she's a top lady. Um, and her partner, like, because I've got two mums now. So both of them are just like beautiful ladies. No, always got along really well with my mum. And she's got a really similar sense of humour. Well, I suppose I have her sense of humour since she gave birth to me. Anyway. Um, so no, I always have a good laugh with her. And I terrorise her on Snapchat. Walking up to her with knives and like, threatening to shank the life out of her. And <laughs> screaming like obscenities at her from across the room. So just for a laugh. My mum's a lesbian, so of course she's going to have all kinds of horrific sex toys hidden throughout her room. And I, well, I know where they are. They're in a bedside table. There's like two drawers just full of like big double enders with like two clip ticklers like hanging off, you know, <laughs> that they just fucking pummel each other's puss holes with. And I just went in there. I was drunk one night and I was, I was Snapchatting you actually and like, the, and like Jojo and Will because you guys were all out together. And I just went in there and um, <laughs> ripped one of mum's big vibrators out of the drawer. No, dildo, sorry. It was a purple dildo. And I just ran my tongue up and down on Snapchat for a laugh. And everyone's pretty disgusted by that. I don't really think it's like a big deal because, I mean, I come out of that puss hole when I was born. So, you know, like, I would have, yeah, I would have tasted it, like, no doubt. And I've seen it, like, I used to shower with her a lot when I was a kid. Actually, I remember once um, showering with her when I was, like, 14, which is a bit weird, I guess. And I was always ashamed of the size of my dick because it was really cold in the house and it was just shoved up to the tip. <laughs> and, and then I looked at mum and she was naked and she had a hell hairy puss and she's like don't look at me and it was, just, it was a really awkward um, actually that was a fucked up experience I forgot about that but yeah back to licking my mum's dildo it was clean obviously because it didn't taste like I, the dishwasher, like, <laughs> yeah it just smashed it to the dishwasher <laughs> I mean it didn't taste like a fucking tin of tuna or anything you know like <laughs> it was fine it didn't really taste so but yeah I mean people think I don't know I probably sound like I got a fucking really Demented Norman Bates kind of relationship with my mom now, but no, it's good.